Hello, everyone. I wanted to do a short video, hopefully, on the first set of study questions, which had to do with our first reading, Epicurus's letter to Minoicus. This is something that I will do rather than respond individually to each set of uh, student study questions that are submitted. It's just easier. It For me, obviously, it saves a lot of time, and I do find myself oftentimes just repeating myself in my responses. So what I'll do is just talk through each one of the questions, give you a sense of the kind of answer I was looking for, at least what I had in mind. If your own answer is way off from what I'm talking about, then feel free to contact me for further clarification if this video does not, um, does not do it for you. So I will talk through them and, and give you what I had in mind. It's not just, it, it's not that exactly what I say is the only right answer that would be silly, but I'll give you a sense of where I was going. And these videos uh, should help with when you're getting your thoughts together for writing your essays and when you are studying for your final exam. Number one was really not a question. It was more of a directive, find the part of the letter that is actually directly about death and copy it. Well, that's just, you know, just to make sure that we know, okay, this is a, um, this is a short reading. It's just a few pages and it's really fascinating, but it really is only this part here, beginning in the third paragraph uh, and then continuing down. Oh, basically the, that whole paragraph that we're really focusing on, um, maybe a little bit here, but definitely the, just this one section. Um, you know, it's a short reading, and then there's an even shorter part of the reading that I'm saying is directly relevant, but I do believe that that's true. But as far as uh, passages about death, it's probably the, one of the most profound and richest philosophical commentaries on what death is and what it is for us. That's ever been written, which is not to say you have to agree with it. Certainly, the course is really about different views of death. And certainly, we know from reading Nagel that he absolutely rejects this, this idea that death is nothing to us. But it's really, I just wanted you to focus. That's all I meant. I meant this part here, continuing to about right, right here, maybe here. But that's it, really. I'm sorry. Uh, According to Epicurus, what is death? He does define death. Uh, if you look on that third paragraph, it's right here. Death is the pervasion of all awareness. That's it. That is, uh, it, and it's important to note that. What you have here is uh, a certain theory of death and an argument about death. And all arguments have starting points. They have assumptions that they start with. Uh, and this is his starting point. This is Epicurus' the starting point about death, that death is the privation, the taking away, the deprivation of all awareness, of all consciousness, of all feeling, of all subjective life. Um, that is death. Death is the taking away of all that. So there, there is an actual, uh, excuse me, uh, there, there is an actual definition of death. There is a part of that little passage where he says what death is, and, and he says it's the privation of all awareness. According to Epicurus, why is death nothing to us? Oh, and this really covers these two questions too, whether death is a good or bad thing for us. Um, well, there's an argument here, and this is the first, this is really the first step in the argument. It's a basic assumption. It's a major premise of the argument that death is a pervasion of all awareness. For something to be good or evil, Good and evil imply awareness. So for something to be good or evil for us, good or bad for us, we must be aware of it. But if death is a taking away of all awareness, then we're not aware of death. So death itself can't be good or bad for us. Can't have, it's, it's nothing to us. We never experience it. So there is a kind of a tight little argument there that really begins with the assumption that death is the privation of all awareness. Uh, something being good or something being bad for us imply awareness, therefore death itself cannot be anything to us, can have no value for us. So therefore it's not a bad thing and it's not a good thing. Uh, I think that the big message here that death is not a bad thing for human beings, 
according to Epicurus, might obscure the fact that he's also saying it's not a good thing. If it's nothing, it's neither bad nor good. So I think it would be a big mistake to come out of a reading of, of Epicurus uh, with the idea that he thinks that human beings should welcome death or that death is some kind of relief for stuff. He's not saying that at all, because that would be to say that death is a good thing. And he's saying that it's nothing, neither good nor bad. Six is really an open-ended question just to get you thinking about what you believe is, uh, how you feel, what you think about the Epicurean view of death, and, and that is whether it's possible for human beings to adopt it. Uh, because it does demand that we be indifferent to death. It does a man, d demand that we not care. That the most rational thing is to ignore death completely because it's something that, that isn't, will be neither good nor bad for us and is no reason to anticipate in any way because it's not anything we'll actually experience and that we should just be happy living our lives and not not worry about death it's a big question whether human beings can really do that a big question so i just wanted you to start thinking, working out your, your your thoughts about that there's obviously no right answer so that's the uh, first set of study questions my plan is to do a video like this reviewing uh the questions for every one of our readings